Hello and welcome to our full guide of the SAT and ACT exams. Today, we'll be going through the general contents, grading rubrics, and subtle differences of the two tests. Prepared by Elite Star Admission. Let's start with the basics. The two exams that test how ready you are for college both generally take about the same time, which is about three to four hours, including an optional essay portion. They test what the students should have already learned in high school so that they can prepare to take on classes at the next level. Breaking it down, the SAT consists of a reading section, a writing and language section, as well as a math section. They don't have a dedicated science section, but they do have science-based questions as part of the exam. There's also an optional essay at the end. Meanwhile, the ACT has four sections, reading, English, math, and science, with an optional essay too. Let's further expand on each test. In the SAT reading section, you'll be reading five passages taken from literature, history, social studies, and the natural sciences. You will then answer 52 questions, which vary from determining the meaning of words in context, deciding why an author included a certain detail, finding the main idea of a passage, and comparing two passages, among other things. The SAT writing and language section is basically asking you to be an editor. You'll need to fix mistakes in sentences and passages and revise them for improvement. The SAT math section will test your knowledge in various topics such as Algebra 1 and 2, Arithmetic, Probability, Data Analysis, Geometry, and Trigonometry. It'll be divided into a No Calculator section, where you'll be answering 20 questions in 25 minutes, and a Calculator Allowed section, where you'll be answering 38 questions in 55 minutes. Most of the questions in both sections will be multiple choice, but there will be some that require you to produce your own answers and mark them on a grid printed on your answer sheet. As for the ACT, their English section consists of 75 multiple choice questions. You will have 45 minutes to answer questions on grammar, punctuation, sentence structure, and rhetorical skills. There isn't really anything you need to be memorizing, but it'd be best to brush up skills regarding subject verb agreement, pronoun agreement, adjectives and adverbs, comparisons and superlatives, punctuation, and conjunctions. Just remember that good writing should be clear, consistent, concise, and in complete sentences. The ACT math section requires you to answer 60 multiple choice questions in 60 minutes. Their six question types usually include pre-algebra, elementary algebra, and intermediate algebra questions, along with plane geometry and coordinate geometry and some trigonometry questions. The ACT reading section consists of 40 multiple choice questions that need to be answered in 35 minutes. There will be four passages on prose fiction, social studies, humanities, and natural sciences for you to read and 10 questions to answer per passage about their explicit and implicit meanings. The ACT science section has 40 multiple choice questions you should finish in 35 minutes. This section consists of seven science-based passages presented with graphs, charts, tables, and research summaries on topics such as biology, chemistry, physics, and the Earth-based sciences such as astronomy, geology, and meteorology. Most of the questions can be answered from the information presented, but be prepared for three to four questions that may require outside knowledge, which includes looking up data and trends, making predictions, and synthesizing information. Whichever test you decide to take, we recommend writing for both essay sections. Not only do some schools require it, but it could boost your scores and impress your admissions officer. For more information on why you should take either test if they're optional now, a possible alternative test, and more college advice, feel free to check out our Instagram page and the rest of our YouTube channel. While it may seem like a lot to go over in such little time, some students have actually considered the ACT to be more direct and therefore easier and quicker to answer. It's tough to decide which test is better for you since different students have their own preferences based on their strengths and weaknesses. 
The SAT is basically 50% math and 50% English, while the ACT is divided pretty equally between these four sections mentioned. So a student struggling in math, for example, might consider taking the ACT over the SAT for this reason, but again, each student is different, so we'd suggest looking into both practice exams online to get a better feel for yourself. A lot of people have never actually even heard of the ACT, and so the test is often overlooked. Another point to consider is that the science portion of the ACT only requires you to read a scientific article and then answer questions based on that article, so you don't actually need to memorize anything science related. The ACT as of now is also computer based, whereas the SAT is paper based. The SAT and ACT are scored differently, but at the end of the day, they more or less test the same general high school level knowledge. Depending on the kind of university you're looking to get into, 1450 and above is a good aim for the SAT and 30 to 32 are good scores for the ACT. I hear that a lot of students you're anxious for and struggle with the essays. When finding an SAT or ACT tutor in Indonesia, they generally only focus on the math portion instead of the writing bit. So let's quickly go over those grading rubrics. Put simply, the SAT will have two graders who will each assign a score of 1 to 4 for each of the three categories for a total of 6 to 24. What they want to see in your essay is your ability to understand the provided passage, write an argument for or against the passage, and then back up your stand using both your own and the passage's evidence and examples. The ACT essay will also have two graders who will each assign a score of 1 to 6 for a total score of 2 to 12 for the entire essay. The idea is similar in that you are expected to write a coherent and organized essay according to the given passage. Having an introduction, body paragraphs, and conclusion matters. Having a thesis statement matters. Having logical explanations and examples with evidence matters. It isn't so much about what you answer, it's about how you answer and how you justify your answer. If you're looking to take the test this year, here are some scheduled exam times for 2022. There's a lot you can do to prepare for both tests. There are links in the description of this video that you can look into for more details on grading and content. You can also find free past SAT and ACT papers you can use as practice before registering for the real thing. Remember that you can take either test up to three times, so it's best to start early and aim high. There are tutors you can find in person or online, depending on your location. There are a few you can easily Google for places in and around Jakarta, but also feel free to contact us for a reference and a head start. Here's an estimated list for taking the SAT in 2023. We highly recommend starting as early as the 10th grade, but you generally want to take these tests in the 11th grade. Even if you're past that, it's not too late to start now. And here's the list of ACT tests in 2022. For both exams, you can register online after a quick Google search. The first date under the online score release column is when the multiple choice scores come out. Meanwhile, the second date over here is when the complete scores with the writing section come out. And finally, here are the estimated dates for the 2023 ACT tests. Make sure you register for the international tests instead of the ones inside the US. Double check the times to ensure it's at a reasonable hour for your time zone if it's online. For more college admission and application help, tips, and information, contact us using our email. Be sure to check out our Instagram and website as well. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more university-related info. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next video.